Hi, we're going to work through a systems of equations practice task today. Now, I have already actually written out work solutions for this, but I'm just going to talk you through them. So let's first take a look at the task itself. So we've got this one about eating McDonald's. Cameron, Nicole and Tom were very hungry. After a long day, they go to McDonald's. And then we've got some information about what they ate. Um, how many of each type of thing that they had, and then the total grams of fat that they consumed in that meal. So then we go on to looking at some of the details we're being asked to figure out. So how many grams of fat are in each type of food? Um, and then going on to the situation changes a little bit, and then how it affects our um, working out of that. Okay, so let's take a look at what we do first. We've got this information here about the number of different items consumed and the total amount of fat. So we need to put them into a set of equations, which I've got over here. So B is the um, grams of fat that's in a Big Mac. Um, C is the grams of fat in a cheeseburger. And F is the grams of fat in medium French fries. Now, you always have to start by defining what the thing is that you're going to go on and use in your equations. Uh, it might be easier to set up the equation first and leave some space above to think about how exactly you're going to word that. Sometimes actually writing down the equation helps you figure out just what exactly is it that we're defining there. OK, so we've got our definition and then we go back across to uh, the information we're given. Two lots of Big Macs, two lots of cheeseburgers, one medium fries makes 94 grams of fat. So there's Cameron's um, uh, equation there. And then we've got one that relates to nickel and Tom. We put that into the graphics calculator and we can get an exact solution there. So this gives us a unique solution, which means there's one point of intersection of those three planes there. It's always good to explain what um, the type of solution you have means geometrically. So this means we've got one point of intersection, one unique solution. And then you must write it as a uh, a set of sentences. So say specifically in context what that 26, 12 and 18 means. So we've got the Big Mac's got 26 grams of fat, cheeseburger 12, french fries 18. So then we go back to the question, we see what happens next. So then Nickel's a little confused, he's not actually sure how many french fries he had. Um, if we assume he can eat half packets, investigate the number of french fries he would need so that he's had the most fat. OK, so back over to this bit. I've changed colour so we know we're on to the next section. It's the green bits here. So we don't actually know how many packets of french fries or portions of french fries that um, Nichols had. So give that um, a variable there that we're going to try and work out. So I've called that one A. You could call it any sort of constant term you want to put in there, but I've just chosen A. So we've got, we know he had three Big Macs and two cheeseburgers, but we don't know how many fries. We want him to have had the most fat. So his total now needs to come to more than 214 because 214 was the most that we had before with Tom. And we want to think about Nickel having the most. And again, remember, as you're going along, write notes about what you're doing. So A represents the number of French fries. So we've made it more than 214. The Big, Big Macs and the cheeseburgers haven't changed. They're still 26 and 12 grams. So then we've got this equation to work through and um, to solve that inequality. So A's got to be more than 6.2. Um, the closest half portion to that would be 6.5. So Nikhil needs to eat 6.5 portions of French fries to have eaten the most fat. So there's the second bit done. And then the last part is that Nickel now remembers that um, he actually only ate one medium French fries, which means he only ate 120 grams of fat. Now investigate the amount of fat in the different types of food. So he's remembered the information um, was actually different to what he first stated. So we need to set up our equations again. OK, so now I've got a new set of equations where um, the the other two people's equations are just the same, but Nichols has changed. So in the middle here, we've got 3B, two cheeseburgers and one french fries. 
because previously, if you look over here, we had um, nickels was three French fries and it came to 156. So what's changed there is we've got one French fries portion and it came to 120. Now, if you try and put that into the graphics calculator, it will not be able to solve it for you. So um, we then work this through manually with algebra. So my first step is to multiply up these equations into a form where one of the uh, terms we have there has the, the, the same coefficient. So I've done it enough to match up the f's. They look like the simplest with me, with these equations that we have. So I've multiplied them up so that all of the f's are 2f. And then we take a look at what we have. So if we've got all of those equations there, the first thing I'm looking for is do any of them match in the other coefficients as well? So we've got some matching C's, but we don't have any that match with the B as well. So we've got no matching coefficients across all three variables, which means that we don't have any parallel planes. And one thing I didn't specifically point out before was when we first did that um, those new equations, I did write down that there was no unique solution from them when, from trying it on the graphics calculator. OK, so moving on, we know that there's no parallel planes. So now we need to think about that the two situations we have left is either they all meet along a line or they they don't have any common um, points of intersection at all. So either they um, form the book shape uh, or they make the tent shape. OK, so now carrying on solving algebraically. So I've relabeled my equations up at the top here. So they're, they're equation 4, 5 and 6. If we do 5 minus 4, we get B as 26. If we do 5 minus 6, we get B as 26. So we can at least solve to get B. We've got two matching equations of B equals 26. But then we can't go any further because if you try to do equation number 7 minus equation number 8, which would be your natural next step of trying to work out what um, C or F might be, you get 0 equals 0. This is something that is always true, which means there are many solutions. Now, you might have just noticed I deleted the word infinitely because whilst talking about it, I realized there aren't actually infinitely many solutions on this one because we've been limited to half portions and we know that there's going to be a limit of um, uh, the range of v values that uh, these things can take. So whilst normally if, if planes meet along a line, there are infinitely many solutions. If we then put restrictions on them, it's not infinite anymore. But there are many solutions, um, multiple solutions to this problem. So the planes that uh, these equations represent meet along a line like this and we have the book situation which means that we, that we then need to go on and find a general solution and a specific example. So for our general solution we let f be equal to t and like you've seen in previous videos we could have chosen any of those variables to be equal to t and then carry on from there. Then using f is t in these equations up here then we get um, so this this is from equation number one we get that 2b plus 2c uh, is equal to 94 minus t and then from equation number two we've got 3b plus 2c is equal to 120 minus t which brings us down to b equals 26 which actually we saw earlier and we could have recognized that we already had a solution to that but I wanted to work through um, all of the steps because that doesn't always happen OK, then the next thing, if B, if F is T and B is 26, then we can go on and work out what C is. So going back up to one of these, 2C would be equal to 94 minus T minus 52. So C is 21 minus a half T. So our general solution is that the Big Macs are 26, the cheeseburgers would be 21 minus half of T, and the fries would be equal to T. Now, since we can't have negative grams of fat, there must be some restrictions on what values T can be. So all of these have to be above zero. So we set them equal to zero. Now, 26 is always going to be 26, so we don't need to do anything with that one. But 21 minus half T, that's got to be greater than or equal to zero. And for the French fries, T must be greater than or equal to zero. So if we combine those two things, we can rearrange this one. T's got to be less than or equal to 42 and t's got to be bigger than zero. Therefore, our final um, thing, putting both of those things together, is that t must be between zero and 42. 
Now we give an example of one possible solution. Um, I've just picked t equals 10 because it looks like something that would be easy to work with. So in the case where t is 10, the Big Macs would be 26, the cheeseburgers would be 16, and the French fries would be 10 just by putting them into these three equations that we have up here as our general solution when t is 10. So then we write that as a sentence. The burgers would have 26 grams of fat, the cheeseburgers would have 16, and the French fries would have 10. And we are done to an excellence level. There is one final thing where if you want to do this to the very top level of excellence um, and perhaps get the highest possible marks, which is to recognize that since these um, all met on a line, um, we refer to those as being dependent equations and we can find the linear combination of them. Now, this was on a previous video. I won't talk through it too much in detail here. You can go back and have a look at how we do this. But it's basically looking for what's the pattern that links those three equations together. So you set yourself up um, a potential linear combination and then you work through what the results of that could be. Now, in this one, it's a fairly simple one, which is that the first two equations, if you add them together, make the third equation. And there's our linear combination.